Hi there, my name is Antonio Peregrino, and today I will talk to you about nested cross-validation, an important technique to make sure we have selected the best model possible for our machine learning problems. By the end of this video, you will know what nested cross-validation is, why is it important, how to perform it using Python, and how can Plumber help you when executing it at scale. When tackling a problem using machine learning, we are expected to select the best model from a wide variety of options from which data to use, what features to engineer, which features to select, the model we will use, and obviously its hyperparameters. It is on these last two that we will center our attention for this video. Should we use random forest? How about the support vector machine? It doesn't stop there though. How about the hyperparameters? Should a random forest contain 50 trees, 10 trees, or five are enough? All these decisions need to be made while making sure our model generalizes well enough to be put into production. Imagine you are working on a project and you have already spent the time and the arduous work of cleaning the and engineering your training set features. Should you just train a model and put it directly into production? Of course not. Before deploying it, it is very important to have an estimate of how the model will do when exposed to new data. So let's say we could take the training set and get the model to predict the labels for that set. We could call it testing set, but keep in mind that this is an exact copy of the training one. Once we get the predictions, we can measure how different are these from the real values. In this case, we should use an evaluation metric, let's say accuracy. This is how you could do that using Python, scikit-learn and the famous Iris dataset. Let's say our model gives us an accuracy of 0.97, which is something really impressive. However, this approach is incorrect. We should not use the same data set for both model training and model evaluation. This is bound to be a biased result since the model has already seen that data before. In a way, we're helping our model cheat. Among the possible solutions to our previous problem, we could decide to split the data into two datasets, one for training and one for testing or evaluation, and use them accordingly. Take a look at this code example, where we are splitting our dataset using the popular train test split function in scikit-learn. When we follow this approach, we might get a less optimistic value for evaluation metric, given that the model is predicting on data that it hasn't seen before. While splitting our data is definitely a better option than the first thing we attempted, it has a major issue. Our evaluation results depends on the selection for the testing dataset. We might have gotten lucky and selected an easy test set, or we could have gotten unlucky and picked a set full of outliers, making our estimate overly pessimistic. But what if I told you that there is a way to account for many possibilities of test sets? Say, we can divide our training set into evenly sized segments, then we select one of these segments to act as our testing set, while the rest are still used as training data. We evaluate the performance and get a measure of performance for a model trained on the training set. Then we go on to select a different segment as test data and get a second performance measure. And we keep doing the same until we have covered all our data. This is a process known as cross-validation, and it gives us many performance measurements from different segments of our data set. We can then aggregate this. For example, we can average the results and get a single measurement. To implement cross-validation in Python, we can use the following code. As you can see, it is achievable using scikit-learn itself. You see that tree right in there? It specifies the number of segments to divide the dataset. Using the mean of all the scores, we get a robust estimate of how the model will perform in production. Before keep going with this tutorial, I would like to remind you to follow Plumber across all social networks, as well as invite you to keep an eye on our blog where you will find more insightful content just like this one. And just one last thing. 
We have a Slack group where we can answer all your questions. Now, let's go back to the tutorial. We now have a way to estimate the performance of our models using cross-validation. However, we are not done just yet. As I said before, there are many options for our choice of model. There is XGBoost, Random Forest, Logistic Regressions, and so on. We can try a few of them and then pick the best. We have already tried a Random Forest, so let's add a support vector machine into the mix. Remember, we can now use cross-validation. Here are the results compared to our Random Forest. It sure seems that the support vector classifier is slightly better, so should we use that one? No, not yet. Remember that models can be configured via the hyperparameters. And so far, we have only used the default ones. We could try different combinations and then make a decision. Look at this Python code. We have two different configurations for each model. Based on that code, we get something similar to this output. And there we go, 0.99 accuracy. But don't get your hopes up yet. These results are a bit misleading since we are using the same cross-validation to select both the model and the hyperparameters for the model. See this paper for further details. Here is where nested cross-validation enters into play. Nested cross-validation offers us a more accurate method to estimate the performance of a given model while optimizing the hyperparameters at the same time. The name, nested cross-validation, comes from the fact that we are effectively nesting two cross-validation techniques. Have a look at this diagram. There are two cross-validation loops. One is inside the other. For reference, look at the third run. We run a second cross-validation, this time around dividing the training dataset into train and test again only to calculate the best hyperparameters. In this limited example, we are trying two configurations for estimators, two and five. Once we find the best configuration, we use it to report the results back to the initial loop. This process is repeated until we're finished. By the end, we will have a table to compare the models and pick the best one. Look at this Python code where we run the nested cross-validation using yet another utility in the powerful scikit-learn library. Given these results, we can now confidently pick the best, which is the support vector machine as our winner model. We can also make assertions regarding its performance. As a final step, we run a cross-validation procedure to find the optimal hyperparameters. Note that this is the usual cross-validation I mentioned earlier. Looking at these results, we can be confident about our choice of model and hyperparameters, and we can deploy the support vector classifier with the linear kernel. Please do remember that we should report the results as shown from our nested cross-validation. Using Plumber pipelines, it is possible to create and execute machine learning pipelines that include nested cross-validation. To get you up to speed, we have put together an example. You can try it out by installing Plumber if you haven't done it before, downloading the example using its identifier, install the requirements specified inside the example folder, and run the pipeline using Plumber build. To customize it to your dataset, simply edit the load.py file inside the tasks folder, run Plumber build again, and you should be good to go. Also, Feel free to edit the pipeline.yaml file to add more models and train them in parallel. As we add more models and hyperparameter combinations, our nested cross-validation computational needs grow. It is possible that you find your pipeline executing hundreds of training procedures only to find the best one. When you face a scenario like this, it is best to harness the power of parallelism. Since each training run is independent from each other, they all can run at the same time. You can use Plumber to do so in a single machine. But if you want to distribute this work across many computers, Plumber Cloud is there for you. It will take care of setting up the required infrastructure and execute your pipeline in the cloud. Once the runs end, all the infrastructure gets shut down, keeping your cost low. 
All this happens in the background. You don't even need to leave your notebook. I hope this tutorial has provided you with some valuable knowledge. Remember that there is more to learn in our blog. Feel free to reach out in our social channels. We love to hear from you. And don't forget to join our Slack community, where like-minded individuals get together to talk about machine learning, from research to productionalization. See you in the next one.